Welcome, welcome. It is Tuesday, June something, and this is episode uh, 19, I think. <laughs> wow, I should have checked uh, the calendar. Uh, planning ain't easy. How to get the most out of your RV adventure. If you are catching the replay, make sure you comment below, hashtag replay, something like that. Uh, let me know you're watching. It means so much to me because um, I know I tend to have technical difficulties and for the people that replay that aren't even in the conversation thank you for watching <laughs> um hey guys i see tara she says greetings hey uh nursing our travel bug our bug is here i just went to a baseball game with them um over the weekend hey natasha hey bill how you doing oh jerry's here oh jerry is back in the north carolina mountains from costa rica he's been in costa rica i think three or four months um you guys might remember him he was on the show back in february um hey deb deb's here from mass uh just got home today from 10 nights on the cape uh, okay brag about it <laughs> that sounds amazing Awesome. So I will give you guys a little update. We've got a lot going on in tonight's episode. Let, so let's get going. I just want to show you this picture. I went to a wedding and this was the best picture Ed took of me um, as we are like literally getting dressed in a Sitco parking lot in the swamp somewhere. I'm just going to blow it up because I want you guys to see my flip-flops. So I'm wearing flip-flops and Ed's getting dressed in the parking lot and he's like, oh, I almost want to wear my flip-flops. You know, he's got, he bought like a new uh, dress pants, new shirt, you know, because we don't carry those things really anymore. And I said, oh, just, just wear your flip-flops. This is a Florida wedding. Like, I'm wearing my flip-flops. And he said, well, the, the guy that invited me, the groom, he said this is like a suit jacket type of wedding. And I was like, oh, well, you didn't tell me that. I probably would have bought like some flats or something. But I was like, okay, whatever, it's Florida, everyone's gonna be wearing flip-flops. And this was this was my reaction to him telling me like it's a suit jacket type of wedding, like dre really dressy, so I was like, okay. And um, so we get to the wedding and we're the first guests to arrive. I don't know anyone, I don't even know the groom. This is someone Ed goes to school with. And we're just kind of wandering around, people start coming in and I notice everyone is like, dressed to the nines. Is that the expression? Yeah. So everyone is dressed super, super nice. Like we are at like a Trump wedding or something. And I'm here in my flip flops. I can tell like women are looking at me weird. I'm like, whatever. I don't, you know, I don't have flip flop or all I have is flip flops. And like, there's the, there's a dude with like dreads down to his butt crack. And he's, <laughs> he's like dressed. He's got like Oh my gosh, everything. And so I started feeling kind of uncomfortable. And then I started talking to people and everyone at the wedding was from Southern California. And I'm talking like Orange County, like, you know, living near LA. And I was like, oh my gosh, no wonder these people are not from Florida. That's why they're wearing stilettos and suit jackets. Like, how did this happen? <laughs> um, so that was the best picture Ed got of me because I wouldn't let him take any pictures of me at the wedding because everyone in the background was, you know, looking like superstars. <laughs> um, but I did want to show you that um, despite me looking only like 80%, Chelsea was looking on point. Check out this picture of Chelsea. She was so cute and uh, she was like one of three kids there. So that was another thing that was like, wow, what am I doing here? Um, but she was looking fly and everybody loved her and forgave me for the flip flops. Um, oh, hey, and my mother-in-law is here. Hey, mom. <laughs> um, that's awesome. So I've got a new segment. I've got all this creative energy now that um, we're revamping the core. Hey, guys, can you see me? Let me know. Um yeah i don't know can you guys see me <sighs> let me put it in the comments hey can you see me all right it looks like it's working hey guys i am so sorry about that my electricity turned off um but it looks like it's working i'm so sorry um i am going to um i'm just gonna text our skype guests and let them know i'm gonna call them in just a second um, so 
Um, while I do that, we're going to get into our top three tips for tonight. And this is um, just friends that I've asked that I believe are experts. As you guys know, I always tell people that I only halfway know what I'm doing. <laughs> um, so this one is from Camille Attell, and she's going to talk to us about um, how to talk to your employer if you have a current job um, to go remote. Hi there, this is Camille Attell with More Than a Whelan offering RV life, travel, and remote work resources, and also from Remote Work School, where I teach and coach folks how to find remote work so they can travel when they want. Today, I'm very excited to be on Liz Wilcox's The Virtual Campground. Liz asked me to come talk today about how to talk about going remote with your employer. This is something that um, she's getting questions about, and because I'm an expert in remote work, she asked if I could share some tips with her folks. So I want to offer this up to you today because, uh, you know, one of the things that people talk to me about is, you know, when they want to go remote or work remotely, they think immediately that they need to go find a new remote job and that the job they have now won't work. But there are so many instances where this can work for you. If you approach your employer correctly, if you have a plan in place. And so today I'm going to walk you through the top three things that you can do to improve your odds of going remote with your employer. And let me just also say, I have taught this strategy to a number of students in my remote work school and it has been successful for them. There have been a number of people who thought they could never go remote and using some of these tips, it worked out really well for them. Okay, so tip number one is when you wanna go remote with your employer, you really wanna think about the benefit to the employer. That's number one. You know, most people think about the benefit to themselves, right? They have a more flexible schedule. They can work when they want. But you really want to think about how will it actually benefit the employer? You know, a lot of people think that it won't. But really, it does. It's, it's such a great benefit to them in so many ways. But you have to find out which ways work for your employer. Let me give you some examples. When you go remote, you can actually save your employer money. Think about it. They have to pay for space. Uh, in the office to have you there, whether that's with um, a cubicle, an office, computer equipment, chairs, um, all of that costs the money. And when you go remote, it actually reduces the cost to them. Um, there are other studies out there that talk about how remote workers are more productive, that they get more done when they're able to work alone, when there aren't so many office interruptions. That's another benefit to the employer. Um, also, just your happiness. You know, happy workers are better workers. So there are so many different benefits, like I said, but I just wanted to give you a few to think about. Do your research. Uh, I have lots of resources on More Than a Whelan specific to this topic, so you can find them there. You can also ask Liz because she and I have worked on this as well, and um, she is also very knowledgeable about this area. The second tip I want to give you, and this one is just really important. I mean, they're all important, but I think this one is the most strategic. You need to have what I call a scale-up plan to go remote. Now, what some people do is they go to their employer and they say, hey, I'm thinking about going remote or I'm, I want to work remotely. And they think that somehow the employer is either going to say no or that they're going to say yes immediately. And it's just, you know, a quick, uh, hey, I used to come into the office and then a week later I'm working remotely. It doesn't work like that. You need a very strategic approach to get to that end point. I would give yourself three to six months to work on this plan. Here's how it works. First, you want to approach your employer and say, I'm thinking about going remote. I want to talk to you about the benefits to you, tip number one, about why I think this would be really helpful for both you and me. And I want to give it um, some time for us to test this out. When you use words like test this out, giving them time, you lower the risk to the employer. So the way you could do it is by offering half a day. Uh, one day a week just to try it out or a couple times a month just to try it out and then you want to slowly scale up you know if it works out then you want to try for you know half a day maybe two days a week or maybe a full day two days a week right so you're kind of scaling into this remote working arrangement with your employer so you want to do that like I say over time um, I would say a minimum of a couple of months, which is why I say really three to six months to really get it in place so that you are transitioning into going remote 
full time. They learn to trust you. You all have an, uh, a, an ability to work out the kinks, which brings me to tip number three. And that is you really need to test this plan and then communicate frequently with your employer. So what do I mean by test this plan? Well, as you're scaling up, like I just talked about, you really wanna be working out the kinks. So you wanna test your internet from your home, you wanna test internet from a cafe, you really wanna simulate the kind of remote arrangement that you're envisioning in the future. So if you're gonna work remotely from an RV, then the best thing you can do is go test working remotely from an RV. You really wanna try out your hotspot if you're using a, a hotspot, which is a device that projects internet or your phone or whatever devices you're using, you wanna test it and you wanna test the exact conditions that you plan to work in. And then you wanna test your backup conditions. Sometimes I have to go to a cafe to get Wi-Fi. I've worked from my car, I've worked from a bar. You know, you wanna try all of that out because you wanna really see what's going to work. And then where it isn't going to work, you need to test out your backup plans. All of this is really going to help you really understand what it's like to work remotely and to get your employer to trust that you know what you're doing. All of these things can go a long way in building trust and credibility with your employer. So I want to recap the tips that I just gave you today about going remote uh, or approaching your employer about going remote. Number one is you need to start with what are the benefits to them. Make a list. I gave you a few here today and you can do some more research, but make a list of the ones that are specific to your employer. Number two, you want to have a scale up plan where you're easing into this remote work arrangement. And number three, you wanna test this plan and communicate frequently with your employer. I hope you found these tips really helpful. I've got some notes here. You probably just saw my paper. Uh, I hope you found these tips really helpful. Now, if you wanna go deeper into this topic and you wanna learn a lot more about remote work, not just with your employer, but all sorts of things you can learn, I have a free webinar uh, that you are invited to. There's a link in a description underneath this video. I hope to see you there. Thank you so much for joining me today. All right. That was Camille Attell. As you guys know, um, if you've been following the virtual campground for a while, Camille and I, we partner on a few different things. She's been on the show to talk about remote work, and I just consider her like an absolute pro. She helped me find my job when we were hitting the road, and I was really nervous about income. Um, you know, we hit the road about a year before we were supposed to, so our financial runway was like this. Um, so, uh, she helped me find a road and really gain that or help me find a job and really gain that security. So if you are interested in remote work, um, check out that link in the description. It says something like Camille's webinar. Um, she's just an absolute pro guys. Um, yeah, so awesome. Let's get into it. Thank you guys so much for hanging in there. It really, really means a lot to me. I know I tend to have problems. The electricity literally went out. And since I've got this amazing internet, um, you know, it turns off when the electricity does. So thank you guys for hanging in there, popping back in. I see I did get one thumbs down. So I just want to boo whoever thumbed me down because I'm working hard over here, okay? I have no air conditioning on and I'm in Tampa and I'm sweating for the people. So if you gave me a thumbs down, pff, whatever, goodbye. <laughs> awesome anyway um which brings me to our next point our next guest uh steve and courtney um from epic rv tips tips they also have a youtube channel a stream in life which is one word and i was checking out their um latest video on getting sick in the rv today <laughs> um which was so timely because i've had a migraine for like six or seven days and today was the very first day I woke up and I felt completely great um, which was great timing for the show um, I'm really excited to bring them out I met them um, through the RV Entrepreneur Summit back in February um, hosted by Heath and Alyssa they were on the show a couple months ago and I just really connected with Courtney and we've been talking back and forth on Facebook and through email I just really like what they're doing um, so when I found out they were travel planning experts, I knew I had to have them come on. I've already talked about travel planning before, but I know it causes so much overwhelm and it is so stressful for me and a lot of the viewers. So I had to have them on the show. Let's welcome them on finally. Hey guys, how you doing? Good, doing hey. Great. 
<laughs> All right, everybody can hear everybody, right? Because I muted them earlier, and I, I did hit the <laughs> unmute button. So, hey guys, how you doing tonight? We're doing great. Yeah, we're thank. We're RVers. Just gotta roll with the punches, right? <sighs> yeah, yeah. Um, I was saying when Camille was running that I probably look like a clown, but hey, yes, it's RVing, so it never goes right. Thank you guys so much for rolling with the punches with me and finally making it here tonight. <laughs> Sure thing, no problem. <laughs> uh, where are you guys right now? We are near Cleveland, Ohio. Oh, thrilling. <laughs> That's the reaction we usually get when we tell people we're near Cleveland. <laughs> what are you doing in Cleveland? We have a pretty good friend from um, the financial side of things, Steve's blog, Think Save Retire, and he's here in Cleveland. Their family is actually, he retired early like Steve, and they're actually moving to Panama this year, so... Since we're traveling, we figured we should come see them while they're still in the States, since Panama's a bit far to take the Airstream. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> I mean, where there's a will, there's a way, but yeah, I'd That's definitely nice. rather fly in for the weekend. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If only well, we could plan such a trip. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hmm, yeah, we'll get to that. Good segue there. Nice uh, little foreshadowing. Okay, so before we get totally into travel planning, um, let's talk about who you are, um, where you're coming from, you know, how did you get into the RV life, are you full-timing, all that. Give us your RV story. Okay, we are full-time RVers in a 30-foot Airstream. We came at this from the financial independence kind of movement. I worked in IT, actually Courtney did as well, so we both worked IT jobs. I didn't like corporate America at all, so I really wanted to wanted to get out as fast as I could. Courtney didn't not like her job, <laughs> but she negative. was also working in like a windowless building. So she was willing to accept better offers. And then I came around and I gave her that better offer. So, okay, well, what if we just save all of our, or a large portion of our money. And if we sell both of our houses and the majority of our things move into an RV and travel for a living, that would enable us to decrease our expenses enough where we simply don't have to hold down a full-time job. We can just live almost as cheaply as we want in this 30-foot mobile house and travel from, from place to place to keep our costs down. And, of course, we're adventuring as much as we can, which is super unique. And we just figure we might as well do it while we're young. We still have the energy to go out and hiking and things like that. Uh, so that's that. That's where we came at the 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 RV lifestyle is just a way to reduce our expenses so we don't have to work full time. And travel, because I really wanted to travel. Right. And that was what got me into plan to begin with. It was like, this all sounds good, this whole not having to work full time anymore, but uh, the traveling is what got me super excited, and the RV seemed like the perfect way to do that. Right. So, Courtney, you had to give up your job, and what was that job? I think everybody would find it really interesting. <laughs> I was officially a rocket scientist, but um, what that means is that I was sitting in front of a computer all day in the dark. So um, no natural light is what I meant by in the dark. So getting outside, that's why the traveling and the being outside and the hiking was so important because that was what I did pretty much any time I could get out of work, I was outside. Right. So that was, that right. was a pretty good way to sell it then, Steve. <laughs> yeah, Exactly. Right, because I feel like you don't you don't become a rocket scientist like on accident. Like, oh, I guess I'll do that, <laughs> right? So it was probably pretty it's intentional. Like so, yeah. Right, right. So you guys are technically retired then. Technically, yes. We we like financially independent a little bit better because um, retirement has certain connotations to it. Um, we right. still make money. But right. the money we make is now to enhance our lifestyle. It's to, it's what we call beer money. Um, I like that. The what we yeah. So we have enough to live on comfortably if we needed to. But to have a more exciting life, we we like to bring in a little bit more income and get more beer money. And so, keeps us busy. And exactly. Focused and that kind of thing. Right, right. Exactly. You're not like geriatric. You know, watching Golden Girls on the couch, hoping somebody exactly. you know brings you your Afghan before you freeze to death. <laughs> That's right. We're not only watching the Golden Girls. We're also right. vlogging and YouTubing and things like that. So. Right. And that's one thing that I think stands out for you guys. So you are financially independent. You've worked really hard those first years of, like, accumulation, right? There's 
I remember you guys spoke um, at the RV Entrepreneurs Summit and you said, you know, basically there's three stages of life. So you guys really went hardcore on like accumulating that money, that uh, savings. And so what I like now about you guys is, yeah, you're not retired. You're still doing things. I mean, you're putting up with Liz Wilcox tonight and all her electricity (laughs) and internet problems um, to be here to talk about travel planning. Um, I know you guys mentioned you have a financial blog. um, You have a newsletter. What are some things that you do? So the financial blog is Steve actually started before we actually, as we were developing this plan. So that's been around the longest. And that's Think, Save, Retire. And he blogs about financial independence, personal finance, early retirement. Yeah, I pretty much get underneath people's skin by talking about money. Yeah. That's that's really what it comes down to. <laughs> oh, I get underneath people's skin by talking about crap. <laughs> <laughs> Where, where there's a will, there's a way, like you said earlier, right. and I and I like to find yeah, I like to find that way, and usually I'm successful, but not but not all the time. Yeah. <laughs> so that started first, and then we moved into our airstream and lived stationary for a year while we were still working in Tucson. Let me tell you, living in an airstream in Tucson in the summer is not a good plan. Not advisable. <laughs> yeah, I'm in Tampa right now. I feel you. Yeah. So we were like, okay, one year, we can do this for one year. We started our YouTube channel when we were figuring that whole thing out. So that's been going since then. Um, And then we hit the road and I deep dived into planning because that's who I am. I'm spreadsheet queen. I love, it's the rocket scientist me. I love the whole detail thing. And did two full years of travel, saw all sorts of places, learned as much as I possibly could. Um, And then decided we wanted to share that because on a YouTube channel, everyone kept asking us, how'd you find that place? How did you plan this whole trip? How do you, how do you know that you can get there? What happens when your place, when that is not, when it's full, what happens when the weather changes? Um, And so that's where both our course and then our Epic RV Tips email started because we wanted to share what we've learned and what we've learned from everyone else when we asked them those questions. (laughs) Right. So that was going to be one of my questions. Um, talking about how, you know, you became like a master of planning. So you would say it's probably just like a natural thing for you? I think so. I like to really deep dive into things. Mm -hmm. Um, And so when it was time to start learning, like how to do this, it wasn't going to happen until I felt like I had a good grasp of it. And so I was in every Facebook group I could find. I was checking out every website that mentioned anything to do with anything and just like compiling giant spreadsheets of all this information um, and then putting it all together to plan our own travels. And yeah. And Steve's just nodding. Cause he's like, yeah, no. he's and, like, yeah, yeah. I clearly married up. If I did not marry Courtney, I'd be wandering around in my underwear, not really knowing where to go. So she is, she is definitely like the, the polar opposite. Cause I am, I am free willing. I, I don't have to know where I'm going to stay next week, but right. you know, as much as I love the idea of being spontaneous, you can't be 100% spontaneous. You need some sort of a plan. And, um, she definitely keeps us on the straight and narrow more, th- more times than not. <laughs> at least I have backup plans. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love that. So you talk about, you know, you have to have at least a general plan. You went into Facebook groups, forums, things like that. So can yeah. you, Give us kind of like a really high level of what you learned from, you know, watching people, um, maybe some like top tips on how to use those groups themselves to uh, better plan their travels. I like to take little pieces from lots of different places and kind of compile them because people are, are good natured and they mean well, but not everything is going to work for every person. And so in a Facebook group, you'll get somebody asking a question about how to prevent mice in your RV, because we had that problem multiple times. And we tried many of the things that people talked about, and some of them worked and some of them didn't. And deep diving even further, I found a few things, and then we really like hit on a couple things that made it so that we no longer had mice in the RV. Hint, we actually put lights under the RV when we think there might be mice around and that has completely prevented them from coming in, which is actually easier than it sounded. That's a bonus tip, guys. That's a bonus tip. (laughs) 
<laughs> jo join for the join for the planning tips and stay for the mice. <laughs> yeah. Stay for were... the rodent infestation uh, <laughs> yeah. problem solving skills. Yeah. But the groups are great, especially if you're looking kind of in the future. So if you're willing to just kind of look in the group, see what people are asking about weather, um, about like route taking or about like planning when it comes to bigger RVs. If you have a bigger RV, how do you avoid the bridges? How do you avoid the toll roads? How do you know that you're going to fit? All of that stuff. It was just a lot of just kind of stalking the groups, but also asking questions over periods of time and kind of compiling all that information in one place. Right. Um, so, a great tip. No, go ahead. A, a great tip for compiling things. So this is one of the things I promote a lot on the YouTube channel. We have it in the, in the email and the course, which Steve always says he's now a master in this because he had to edit my course videos. Um, Google My Maps is an awesome tool for planning. It's a way that you can actually put pins on places that you want to see and save them off for later, but you can categorize them, you can dr make driving directions, you can put links, you can put pictures, you can put YouTube videos. And so anytime we'd see somebody on Instagram or on YouTube promote a place that they were staying that looked awesome, I'd just go and copy that and I'd put a pin on my planning map and my planning map is just chocolate. <laughs> of awesome places yeah. we want to go stay that I found randomly through talking to other people. And so that is one of my big, like, that's where I put a lot of my planning is in Google My Maps. Okay, so Google My Maps is, I'm thinking of it as, like, the modern day 2019 version of, like, the poster of yes. America with all the pins. Yes, exactly. Except that since it's online, you can access it from your phone while you're driving, which is awesome. You can share it with other people so that they can edit it and add things as well. Oh, wow. And, yeah. And then you can have, like I said, all those links right there. So you click on the thing and you can watch the YouTube video right there and like see why you like the place to begin with. So it's really neat. Wow. That, it, that is awesome because I find one of the most frustrating things about traveling, uh, when I get to a place, like somebody mentioned Cape Cod, they just spent 10 days. We were there for two or three weeks, and we had been traveling for four months, and I hadn't seen anything or done anything. You know, it's like, oh, I wanted to go to this place so bad. And then I just felt completely overwhelmed by, like, why did I want to come here in the first place? Everyone's mm -hmm. saying, go do this, go do that. What do I actually want to do? So I, I knew about Google, my maps, and I knew you could do the pins and such. I didn't know it was so integrated where you can... Like, literally put the reasons why or who said it or yeah. whatever. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. You're very welcome. It has helped a lot in both what we've done in the past and what we're going to do in the future. We have so I have so many maps. It's, it's kind of She crazy. is getting so excited, you guys. <laughs> I can see the sweat. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I wanted to ask you, because this is, like I just said, this is the hardest part for me with travel planning, even now that we're we weekend warriors, you know, we live in our rig, but we're not traveling full time. We're just, I mean, I live in Florida. There's so many state parks. There's so many things I want to do. Um, I just get so overwhelmed. I don't even know where to start. I'm like, whatever, I'm not going to go anywhere because I don't, I don't even know where to start. Um, so how, how do you start? How do you take all of this information? You know, you've got this bucket list that, you know, is the length of war and peace. How do you, <laughs> how do you know where to start? How did you guys start? So what I promote is that we, we do what we call major destinations and like minor destinations. And mo most of the time I do that using the Google My Maps. And so I'll have a layer full of pins of these, of those like super high up on our bucket list places. Like those, I would do an entire summer just to go see Glacier National Park kind of place. Like that kind of big ticket place. And then we'll also have like the minor things that are like, that would be, that would be a cool thing to do, but I'm not going to plan a trip just to go do that one thing. Um, and what we'll do is we'll sit down and say, okay, let's pick two majors that we want to go to because we're full time. So we'll say, okay, if we get to, let's say, the RV Entrepreneur Summit, which was one of our major destinations this year, and the next stop we really want to go to is Niagara Falls. 
great. Now what are all the little minor things that I've heard about or seen or, or whatever that are on my map between those? And if I don't have many, then what I do is I'll go and look for our specific interests. So this is one thing about RVing. RVing is a plan your own adventure kind of thing, right? So what we want to go do in a place is not what everyone else necessarily wants to go do. Yeah, we're not museum people. We're not museum people. Uh, we're just, we, it's not our idea of fun. We're also not really like battlefield people or historic site people so much unless it has to do with natural beauty. So we're very big into hiking and beautiful mountains and flowers and waterfalls. And then we're big into food. And so a lot of what our destinations are, are like that pie shop that has been listed five times in national magazines is on my map. Or the brewery. Or a brewery. Or the brewery. Or a winery. Yeah. Or a distillery. Yeah. yeah. So things like that. And so we will go and research areas specific to our interests. And that's kind of how we kind of decide like, okay, well, that place looks cool. Why don't we, why don't we try that? So I guess the, the tip I'm trying to say is try to pick one big thing, kind of categorize like this is one thing that sounds really cool. I would really love to do this one thing. And then see if you can fit other smaller things around it. Don't try to be too much too soon. I want to do these three amazing places all in one week because that can get like you said, overwhelming, and it's just, it's way too much. Right, that's great. Everyone is saying wow about the Google My Maps. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, Nelly says, I'm excited to check out My Maps. Thank you for the info. Um, yeah, oh, and the Trekkers, they are so sarcastic. They show up every week and say something. He said, there's a follow-up book idea for you, Liz. Tales from the Mousetrap. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. awesome so um how do you so when you use google my maps do you integrate it with google maps is that how you're traveling using google maps how does that all work together so we predominantly use google maps um, okay i will map the route usually in google my maps beforehand and i will go and look at the route so we travel in airstream so it is not too big of a rig um, but we do still have to worry about some things. And one thing we really dislike doing is paying tolls. He really dislikes paying Preach. tolls. Preach. We have, we have Google's avo avoid tolls at all costs yes. on ours as well. Absolutely. Yes. And so sometimes when you avoid tolls, though, Google can get a little creative with how it maps you. And that's not always the best idea when you're in an RV, especially if you're in a big RV. Yeah, that's and also true. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> so I tend to make sure I'll, I'll, I'll look at the route beforehand and make sure I know that it's going to be okay. And then we use Google Maps to just map us that day. And that way, if just regular Google Maps, because that way, if there's traffic or the road shuts down, which has happened to us, it will tell us and try to route, reroute us. And then I can sit there and try to make sure that that route is still gonna work for us and it's not gonna be a problem. Um, and so that's, that's our main way of traveling and planning the route. We know people who use um, the RV GPSs and they can be awesome in terms of making sure that you're not gonna go down a road that's bad for your RV. Um, but we haven't felt the need for ours as of yet. Yeah, we bought an RV GPS from Techno RV back in September, yes. and my husband, we used it for a little bit, and he went back to using Google Maps and using that to just, like, double check before we yes. actually hit the road, because yes. it was just kind of archaic. Um, yeah, like you said, Google Maps, you know, they have traffic updates, things like that, which actually I didn't even know about, so this is how... I live my life very, like, I'm still in 98 or something. Before I had my website, I didn't even have Facebook or anything like that. And so I use, I actually, I read directions before I go somewhere, and I try to use it, I try to not use a map, like a, like an, like a tech map, like Google Maps or something. And so I'll literally have like handwritten directions and things like that. Cause I, I'm a very like, I want to be self-reliant. I don't know. Like the original hipster. I don't know. <laughs> but I turned on, I turned on Google Maps just a few, I guess last month when I was going to Tennessee and it was like, 
you know, it was telling me about the, like, you know, in the red about, you know, this is 20 minutes off your route. Then it was telling me like speed traps. I was like, oh my gosh, what a world, like what a time to be alive. <laughs> like I had no idea. Like some none. Roads, it'll actually tell you the speed limit as well. Some roads, yeah. not all, but it's just, it's just amazing. It is. Yeah. Uh, Johnny Lightning says, Liz, were you even born in 1998? <laughs> Sir, I will have you know I was born in 1988, okay? <laughs> <laughs> A full 10 years older than you thought I might be. <laughs> awesome. All right, so this is another great question. So I know you guys have done the general RV planning. You've been out there on the road for a few years now. And then this year you told me that everything has had to be like super strategic, super planned out. So can we talk about like how to generally plan and then how to like really, really plan and what are the pros and cons of each? Like why would someone choose one or the other? So this year we are mostly out east. So we're from Arizona originally. In our first two years, we mostly stayed west, actually completely stayed west of the Mississippi. Um, this year we came out east for the Entrepreneur Summit and now we're heading around seeing friends and family. And the big difference between this year and the other years is that there's a lot less land to boondock out in the east. So we did a lot of boondocking. For those who may not know, boondocking for us is staying completely off grid with no hookups, um, usually for free out on something like BLM land, Bureau of Land Management or National Forest land or something like that. Um, so obviously no reservations when it comes to boondocking. <laughs> out east, there's not a whole lot of land to do that. And we also wanted to hit some very specific things since we don't know the next time we'll be out this way. And so this year we decided we were gonna try something a little different and we were going to pretty much schedule our entire trip, especially since we like staying in state parks. And we're gonna be in Michigan starting in about a week and plan to be in Michigan for most of the summer. And Michigan state parks book up pretty quick for the weekends during the summer. And we didn't wanna to have to worry about where are we gonna be this weekend? We can get it for the next three nights, but then we have to go stay in Walmart for two nights and then that whole thing. And so this year in January, I pretty much mapped out where we wanted to be, booked most of our, our state park campgrounds so that we'd know we could get them. I, even in January, I had to change a few because they were already booked for when I wanted them. Um, and then the only real flexibility we have this year is our overnights we mostly do as harvest hosts and those you can't do until the week of. Okay. And so I just have a, a reminder in my calendar saying about a week before saying, hey, call the har harvest host and make sure you can stay on whatever night. Um, and that way, if I can't, I have backup plans, but that's the only thing that's not really planned at this point. That sounds crazy to a lot of people. Well, hang on. Before you go on, my dear, so in January, you planned your whole year, like, to Christmas or? Through Labor Day. Okay, okay. Um, so we pretty much planned the summer. We planned, we made sure we had things booked Memorial Day through Labor Day. In general, we always try to have something booked for Memorial Day, 4th of July, and Labor Day because those totally. are really tough weekends. Mm -hmm. Um. But this year we made sure to book, we booked a lot more in between than we normally do. Yeah, so this is, I'm starting this new thing, like campground service announcement. So this is a CSA. What she is saying is true. Like those holidays, if you want them, get them as soon as you can. Because last year we were in Michigan and we were just at a thousand trails park. And uh, people were trying to roll in, you know, and... They had, they had people, like, literally just parked because it's a membership. So I guess whatever uh, membership this person had, these people had, they were guaranteed a spot or whatever. And they had to park them out in the pasture and pay for these people's gas for their generator. And they were just none too pleased. They ended up having to park at the Meyer, which is like a Walmart in Michigan. And um, they were just, they were just completely ticked off. But... I feel like if they would have had better planning and like ensured they had a spot and didn't just, you know, come and expect one on the, it was literally 4th of July. Um, 
Yeah. So really gone are the days where you can just kind of roll in spontaneously. Because not only are the summers generally more RV, people RV more in the summers anyway, but especially after RVing has become just naturally way more popular, so many people are doing this now, especially on the weekends, that it's just getting harder and harder to find a spot in the campground that you want to be in if that happens to be especially during the summer or in like a highly sought after state like Colorado uh, sometimes it's it is a prayer especially on like Memorial Day or Labor Day one of the one of the major holidays in a major state like Colorado right it's, sometimes it's not easy yeah yeah and I like that you mentioned Michigan we actually have like I don't know like three or four people in the comments that are from Michigan or live there now and uh, the Trekkers, uh, I don't know if you guys met them at the summit, but they are going to, it's the centennial for the Michigan State Parks this year, and they are trying to visit every single state park. And so you might see them out there this we year. because there'll be quite a few of them. <laughs> yeah, cool. And Unknown Normal, they were on last week. They're in Michigan right now. And I know they do, they do like mostly boondocking, and they said the same thing last week, like, east coast is it's it's different. like a beast coast like it's just a totally different yeah. beast um than being out west um yeah. and that was part of our um like error in oh we can just we'll just park somewhere for the night or we can find national land which of course there's national forest here and there's free camping on the east coast but it's really not as um easily accessible and there's not as much out there exactly um, so the West Coast, when we're there, like the other years, I still do a lot of planning. I have my map. I kind of in my calendar know approximately where we're going to be. And I tend to book, like I said, a campground or usually it's a state park or a county park or a national park because those are our favorite kinds of campgrounds um, for Memorial Day, for Fourth of July and for Labor Day. And they become our major destinations, our major waypoints in the summer. And the rest of it is kind of free flowing. Um, I will have maybe have a couple things booked if I'm worried about them being booked up, like in Colorado. But most of the time, I, I kind of get a feel for how busy those campgrounds are. I look a lot for first come, first serve campgrounds out west. They are our favorite because you got to be there. You got to be there. <laughs> and if you can show up on a Tuesday morning, which we can, or a Wednesday morning, then we can get a spot and just be there for the whole weekend and not have to worry about getting kicked out because someone has a reservation or something that's like a great that. that's a great tip for all you full-timers yeah. out there for sure first come first come serve campgrounds are awesome unless you're trying to show up on a friday or saturday <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah can i can imagine rough. yeah um, but yeah if you can show up at a different day during the week you can get yourself a nice spot to hold your over for the weekend so you don't have to plan like rigidly like we are right now all the time um, but it is really nice to have backup plans. Do you want to tell our backup plan story? Yeah, let's talk about it. Bring it on, Steve. <laughs> Which one? Crater Wh Lake. Which one? <laughs> yeah, that was that was quite the mistake. I don't know if I remember the details. I have a horrible memory. But suffice it to say, we had was it in the was it in the park? No, we had we had planned on a. See, see, I'm already lost. I'm, I don't know what I would do without this woman. I am already lost. I can't even tell a backup story. Isn't that cute, <laughs> guys? We had already... So we were planning to camp at this boondocking spot near Crater Lake. We didn't quite realize that Crater Lake was at the elevation it was, and it was right after Memorial Day, and there was still snow. Like feet. Feet of snow. Yeah. Um, and so we got there, and we were, like, trying to do this country forest road that hadn't been plowed and had all this snow and yeah it wasn't a good idea so then it was like okay look at the map what other backup plans well there's another spot another campground up that's up this way an hour away but still on the other side of the lake oh okay. that's when we we okay we drove off the side of the road well that sounds weird we pulled off to the side of the road we unhitched right. the trailer so we can get to some of these spots without having to pull that ten thousand pound air well this 10,000 pound airstream so we left it on the side of the road with the dogs in it and then we went touring around the area in just the truck to see if we could find one of these open spots gotcha. and there were a couple open spots but they were really tough to get to the terrain Mighty. was yeah it was just not it was not a good day so now we're on our third backup plan which was a uh just it was called diamond lake, diamond lake campground up there 
it said max length 30, which is us. Oh, and they meant it. And they meant it. But they, <laughs> they had openings. Great. So we, we go in. We finally get into a spot. Everything's good. Everything's fine. Um, it's much later than it was going to be. And the mosquitoes there were so thick. They just hatched. You could hear the swarms of them through the RV. They're like tornadoes, like tornado mosquitoes, literally tornado mosquitoes. Oh my <laughs> word! So that was it was it was an interesting couple of days. It was not days. pleasant. It no. was, it was... Well, at least we found a place to stay yeah. that was close to Crater Lake. It got what we needed for a couple of days, and it gave us time to regroup to find someplace else. But wow, uh, you stayed there for a backup. couple of days. What? Yeah, we we stayed for I think it might have only been two nights. Yeah, I think it was two nights. I think we stayed that night. We went to Crater Lake the next day. We came back, stayed one more night, and left the next morning. <laughs> we're like, we're done. Yeah, uh, yeah. I can but... imagine with the mosquitoes. That's terrible. Yeah, even I just saw the Trekkers again. They posted something on Facebook today about their worst, like, bo- I asked, like, boondock- terrible boondocking stories, and they said they went to some state land, and, yeah, they said the exact same thing, like, swarms of mosquitoes and they just spent one night and they were like peace out yeah. we're out of here because i was asked yeah i was asking you know everyone always talks about how crappy rv parks are like i'd love to hear some like terrible boondocking stories like let's bring it on i know they're out there <laughs> especially when you don't really know what you're doing yet another pro tip park into the wind <laughs> it really really helps we, one of our first boondocking, we were getting hit by crazy winds in the desert of Utah. And was it, yeah, it was Nevada. No, it was Nevada. And we had parked broadside not knowing it, which meant that we were getting red dust like this thick in the airstream because it was so hot we needed the windows open and we were getting rocked. And it'll rock your rig. Yeah. So if the wind's coming from the west, park into the west. So either the front or the back is facing directly into the wind. It cuts down on the rocking, and if you have to have a window open because you're boondocking and you don't have AC, all that dust, at least less dust, (laughs) will get inside. So that's another pro tip. That's another bonus for you guys. Uh, Johnny says mosquitoes, a good reason uh, to take up cigar smoking. (laughs) (laughs) Seriously, it would not be bothering that guy, would it? (laughs) I I could not smoke enough cigars in Diamond Lake. (laughs) To fend off the the EF3 tornado of mosquitoes that wow. were heading up the direction. And it was just never ending. It was yeah. one after, oh, it wow. was not fun. That's so crazy. So the end story is make sure to have a backup plan. Yeah. Right. And, <laughs> and you notice how none of their backup plans, like they went through ABC, none of them was Walmart. So this lady is a pro, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Walmart's there. Um, and casinos. Casinos are great places out west, too, for parking overnight. Casinos um, are better than Walmarts when, when you can find them, in our experience. Yeah. Way better. Right. That's, security. Yeah, yeah that's uh, so funny you uh, mentioned that. Unknown Normal, uh, a few minutes ago, said the UP of Michigan has casinos you can stay at for free. Double exclamation I point. I have a few of those in my plan for the summer. Hey, maybe y'all will meet at the um, <laughs> in the lot. And... Um, yeah, uh, somebody else said something about casinos as well. Um, but yeah, that's so funny. So real quick, we just have a few more minutes because of all these glitches. Um, why don't you tell us more about um, the Epic RV Tips? Like what is that and where we can find you? So Epic RV Tips came out of the summit after we met all of the awesome people in this community and we wanted to have a way to share what we've learned besides the course just like little weekly tidbits but also share what the people out there have learned so liz has an email that'll be coming out here soon we have an email having to do with um uh shoot my mind just went blank dogs um dogs (laughs) Uh, no it's um, gopetfriendly.com thank you um, about that was bad. Yeah, I know my brain. My brain. It's <laughs> it's almost my bedtime. Um, <laughs> so we just wanted to share things that people have learned through all of this experience that people have RVing in an easy format. And so that's what Epic RV Tips is. It's just a weekly email with mm-hmm. Epic RV Tips about once a week. And, stuff. and they're like eight hundred to a thousand words. So it's it's a substantial like devote you know 
four or five minutes to yeah. it's it's not going to be a thirty second read if you read the whole thing. Yeah, of course. If you read the whole thing, <laughs> <laughs> if you don't skim down to the PS. <laughs> I am a skimmer. I am a skimmer. I am so a skimmer I, as I well. Have, I, I I connect with people who don't read every word, but there but there really is a lot of detail there, and yeah. and of course it's free, so it's yeah. Yeah, so there. Just, uh, the Google My Maps. I have two emails in the series that show you how to set up your own Google My Maps and start working with it and everything like that. Oh so. snap! Well, y'all gotta get on it then, and that's right <laughs> in the link or the link description, and um, it's just epicrvtips.com. That's where you can sign up, right? Yep, exactly. That's it. And I was one of the first subscribers. I saw Courtney. Uh, <laughs> really? <laughs> I knew I was fast. I knew I was fast. Because I saw Courtney posted something like, hey, I'm starting this new thing. And I was like, oh, that is so, I love that. Because, I mean, the way you just described it, Steve, is like this show, right? It's like, I'm not exactly sure on everything. Like, I know some things, but I'm just going to bring in my friends. And we're going to talk about it and just give you the best tips possible. Um, so, I love that. And then. Sometimes you don't have to go digging into all those Facebook groups. Right, right, exactly. Um, so, and last, tell us about the course. We didn't mention the name or anything, but it's about travel planning, right? Yes, it is How to Plan Your Epic RV Adventure. Um, and it is Epic RV Tips blown up to the next level. So we go through a very in-depth section on Google Maps and Google My Maps. Oh, yeah. My mind was blown <laughs> when I was editing this video. And it's all video-based. No. It, the course isn't free with all you know disclosure, but there's a lot of video-based detail in there. Yes. So we do Google My Maps. Um, we talk about picking major destinations, finding minor destinations, lots of websites for different hobbies on how to do that, planning a safe driving route, finding the best campgrounds, making sure you have all your specs, backup plans, weather, cell phones, Wi-Fi, pretty much anything you'd need to do to plan a trip and make sure that it goes off Hopefully without a hitch, but if there is a hitch, you're prepared. And we don't just tell you, we show you. Yeah. Like the screencasts awesome. and that, that kind of thing. We so we're it. actually telling you where to click on some of these things so yeah. to show you how it all works. We have four in-depth examples from different people who sent in ideas, um, and we plan out the entire trip for them. using What? The That's wicked. Yeah, Deb yeah. says, huge thanks uh, for the epic RV adventure course, planning our retirement for the beginning of 2020. That's so cool. <laughs> Go, Deb. Congrats. I know. That's exciting. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for coming on and sharing all your tips about RV planning and those couple bonus tips and fun stories. <laughs> uh, it was really great um, to hear all your stuff. And if nothing else, y'all get on Google My Maps. Yes. Um, we need. We all need to be on there. <laughs> yes. It's a, it's, a big, it's a big help for planning. It is. Yeah, it sounds like it. Thank you guys so much. No, thanks, thanks for, for having, having us, Liz. Bye. All right, bye. Awesome. We're running a little behind, so I'll just uh, quick tell you about next week. Next week, we're going to have some of my good, good, good buddies, uh, Julie and Sean Chickory of Chickory's Travels, and they're going to be talking about budgeting. Um, they are pros. They have saved and um, become debt-free just this year. It's freaking amazing. Um and they are retired military. They are traveling the West Coast this year for the first time. And I just love their story. And I am so excited um, for them to come on next week and talk about uh, what they're the best at budgeting um, for RV travel. Thank you guys so much, seriously, for working through um, the tech issues with me. This campground is great, but it's also cheap. And sometimes the electricity just randomly turns off. Uh, next week, I will have my hotspot on um, just in case so we don't have any of this craziness. Thank you guys so much for sticking around. Remember Camille's webinar. There's one tomorrow at 1 p.m. Kyle in the comments says he's setting his alarm so he can come. And then there's one Thursday night at 8 p.m. Also, you can check out Steve and Courtney's course. Um, their newsletter, their financial blog if you're interested in that, and a couple other things in the video description. I hope you guys check it out, and I will see you next week. Woo!